In this second chapter, using our tileable texture map as a base, we will learn how to paint displacement, bump, diffuse, and specular maps. We will also learn how to control displacement map values by understanding how positive and negative displacement is controlled with RGB color mapping. Okay, so now we want to create our displacement map, and what you're looking at is a, another photograph, and this one actually I took at the beach recently. And I'm just using this one for demonstration purposes, and then we're going to apply these techniques to our original um, stone image that you saw a minute ago that we were creating our tileable map from. So this is the basic idea behind just the color map, and then if we want this stuff to displace properly, we need to know how to properly paint white and black and grayscale values on this so that we can have geometry that will go in a positive direction and a negative direction. So in the end, our displacement map is going to look something like this. And what this is, is uh, you can see here white values I painted by hand to kind of demonstrate where I think maybe there should be positive displacement. And then the black values are where I think that maybe there should be a negative displacement that would go uh, in a, a downward direction. As you can see here, kind of represented by the cracks. And some of the things you kind of have to eyeball on your own, like when you see a piece like this and some shading here, you can imagine that this is maybe a few inches lower than this piece. So for example, this piece is all black or pretty dark so that that would go down and then these areas would raise up around it. So you'd have almost like a hole. So to kind of visualize how this all works, yes, displacement works off of um, uh, 255 uh, grayscale value with an RGB. So what that means is, um, as you can see here, RGB 255 is pure white. That means the highest level of displacement in a positive direction and then zero will mean it's the most negative uh, or downward displacement. 128 is a neutral value, so if you see 128 gray in a map here, it doesn't displace, it just stays neutral. And uh, most programs kind of use this algorithm even though it's something that's not commonly taught. So if you want to understand how displacement works, that's generally how it works in a lot of programs. And here you can see an example of this image displaced on a plane within ZBrush. So you notice that the positive values in white are clearly displacing higher, and then the black values, which are the negative, well not negative here, but zero, uh, these are going downwards. Anything that's kind of a neutral gray, this kind of stays with no displacement. So you're going upwards and downwards. So you want to kind of remember that, because that's going to come back later when we're actually displacing stuff in ZBrush, but also just from a learning perspective, this is really important for you guys to know, and it's a very basic concept. So let's go back to our stone wall pattern. Um, what you guys see here is this is the tiling displacement map that I created um, after I was showing you the brief demo on this larger piece. So whenever I was done, I came up with something like this, and I'll show you, yes, this is tiling. So if we go to filter other, you'll notice you don't see any creases anywhere. That's because I went through and I used those techniques a minute ago to make sure that everything worked out. So now what we want to do is go on top of this and make our own displacement map. And I'll show you kind of what it looks like. This is a basic idea of um, how I'm creating the displacement for these pieces. And the way I'm thinking about this is think of it as like a rock wall that's going to be um, displacing in positive and negative directions. So whenever you see the white in areas like this, that's going to be positive displacement. And then all these black areas where I'm just kind of painting darkness in. And I've got this on a different layer called um, displacement, displacement details, uh, and different things. But let's just start from scratch and I'll show you kind of how this all works out. Um, so one of the things that I like to do constantly is I'll go to the window here, pull up info, and over here you'll start to see RGB values. So if you have your cursor or any type of little icon over here, wherever the point is, notice over here that these numbers will start changing. So what you're looking for is if, if you have something you want to be kind of like a mid-gray value, uh, to be at 128. So probably what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just adjust the uh, color of this a little bit so that we get it more in a neutral value. So I'm going adjustments, levels, and I'm just going to brighten this up a little bit. And the cool thing is that you can brighten this and then you can kind of go over here and you can see the new values. So um, it's hard to show, but over here, the right column is like the after and the left would be before. So let's go a little bit brighter. I'm not going to go too much brighter than that. Anyways, this gets us in a, a little bit of a better place. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is let's make a new layer and this one we'll call white. And white's gonna be our positive displacement. And then we'll make another layer called black and that will be the negative displacement. So I think I'll put the white over here on top of this one and then I'm just gonna to come to our brush and basically I'll have white and black values here and um, now you can just kind of start painting things. So I'm pressing B again, I'm gonna make this smaller and then it's just kind of how you want to paint high values and low values. I'm getting some of my <laughs> C brush commands mixed up, I'm trying to change a uh, brush size when I can't do that. So what I'm just doing is finding a couple places where I'm gonna pop up some uh, positive displacement here. If you need to have a lot of control over the surface, I'll show you some things we can do in a minute. But for right now, I'm just kind of going for overall positive and uh, negative values. Let's go to the black layer, which is a little bit lower. Press X on our keyboard. X will switch between these two. And now we can go to the black value. Um, one thing that I have enabled is this little button up here. If you guys don't have this enabled, whenever you're painting, sometimes you'll get like a, a little hard edge on your brush. Let me just increase this and maybe we can see it. Eh, it's kind of hard to see. But anyways, um, I usually turn this off because it allows me to have a, a smoother blending gradient in here. I wish I could demonstrate what I was trying to show you. But uh, yeah, so now let's paint negative values. A lot of times I'm going for kind of broad strokes uh, because displacement maps work really well when you kind of keep them, I guess, a little bit blurred. Like you don't want things, everything to just work perfectly. Meaning you don't want things super crisp in your viewport. So I tend to do a lot of faded brushes and things like that as, a, as I'm working on these. You know, maybe you'll have some where you want it to kind of fade up more, and one of these rocks goes a little bit lower than the others. And again, like the tileable texture map, I'm not going to do the entire thing. I'm just going to kind of get through the basics here so you know the techniques, and you can do this on your own if you want to make your own displacement maps. And the thing I love about these techniques is um, if you guys are familiar with a lot of the 3D scanning data that's coming through from um, companies like uh, Quixel Megascans and um, a number of different companies, they go out with actual machines that will scan rocks or different materials in real life. And what they do is they'll generate displacement maps for you. And if you look at those, they do honestly look a lot like this because it gives you the height values and the negative values. It's much more precise, but I know a lot of you guys are students. Um, maybe you don't have extra money to buy those. So this is a good technique you can do. And then also, regardless of the money, um, there's a lot of times you're just gonna find your own cool photos that you wanna take of maybe like you know, like a brick wall somewhere or different things. Um, I constantly take photos everywhere I go, and it's so handy now these days when you have iPhones and uh, mobile phones that have great cameras on them already because you just never know what you're going to use. Um, you know, whether you find an interesting uh, dirt patch that you want to take or things like that. And then you can photograph those and make your own displacement maps. So here you start to get a basic idea of what we can do. I'll fade this one in so that we have a nice fade right here. And the idea would be you would continue to do this for the entire piece. Now, if you wanted to get really precise, and some people do like to do this, uh, you could come in and one of the techniques I like to do is I'll go through with the lasso tool if I really wanted to trace this. And you could come through here, find like really specific shapes that you want. And then maybe give this like a small uh, feather, something like uh, four. 
And then what I like to do is I can press Control H to hide that, and it's still active. Now I go back to um, my brush, and if I was to just continue painting this, you'll see that uh, you get a much harder edge right here. And since I did the um, uh, lasso select with the feather on it, it's not quite as sharp as we wanted. So let's press Control H to unhide that again. Control D to deselect L to go back to our lasso, and this time. I'm not going to feather it at all, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Control H, hide that. Let's go back to our brush. There you go. So now you can see you have the nice, really sharp value here. That would give us like a really strong rock displacement. And then um, if you were to do Control Shift I, it inverts your selection. Control H again, let's go to brush. I'm gonna press X to go to black. And then we can paint the other side of the selection. So just inverting those um, selections I, I find are, is really valuable and really quickly being able to uh, break out different shapes and things like that. And then uh, afterwards I'll press Control H to unhide that, Control D, and then maybe just over top you uh, go through and give something to just give it a little bit more of a blend because displacement, when you have hard edges, it really moves the geometry around a lot and we wanna be able to fade these in a bit. But that's just another cool technique that you can do to get a lot more precision as you're creating those. Uh, the other thing that you wanna do is, remember I keep talking about how you wanna blur stuff whenever you're displacement or displacing. What I always do is on this, um, whatever this background image is that, gonna, that I'm gonna have, my base, I go through and I do a filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And um, the idea of this is to just remove most of the fine, fine detail because that we can turn into a bump map later. But this gives you an idea of, you know, it looks really soft and things like this, but it works pretty well as a displacement map. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward and show you what my final displacement map looked like. And this is what I ended up creating. And um, if we were to take this, well, you can see I've got a bunch of different layers in here. But this is my tileable displacement map that I'm going to use in a few minutes in ZBrush. And then also we have our um, bump map down here. Sorry, not bump, but our diffuse map. And that's going to get us all of our color information. And with just this and then the displacement map, we can actually get a lot of what we're going to um, want to have. Um, the other thing I might want to do is just quickly make a spec or a bump map. So let's do that really quick. Um, you remember that one technique that I did just a little while ago for removing darkness values to get a nice bump. What I've done in here is the same thing where I, I went through and I removed some of this color information to make the bump. But let's just do it again. So we'll duplicate this. I'm gonna hide this right now, I don't really need it. Um, and you remember how I did the control I to invert the thing. Uh, and then we do a nice kind of blur on this. Push it pretty far. And then I'm going to do my levels again. And this time I'm going to go really extreme on this. I'll be careful. I don't like to go too far where the whites start to blow out. And let's go ahead and try our different values here. This one works pretty well, soft light. The idea is to get one that removes the really dark crack values. So soft light looks pretty good, but if this was a bump right now, this would bump way down. So since we're doing our, our massive um, geometry displacement with our displacement map, we want to make sure our, our bump map's really neutral. So I'm going to use this uh, soft light, and let's just go through here and maybe change the opacity a bit. Actually, that's not bad. Let's keep it at 100%. Let's adjust the values a little bit more. And once again, I'm just doing those auto levels. And what we're looking for here is just mostly surface information. We can have a little bit of bump that's going through and cutting through in these areas. But this I think is going to work out quite nicely. 
So let's just look at the difference, right? Or if you had displace, and then we got bump. So we'll save this off to be our bump, and I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Final thing I'm gonna do is give a uh, nice spec map to this. Before I do that, I'm gonna call this one bump. And sorry if I'm jumping all over the place here, guys. I, uh, I'm trying to cram these together in time for the ZBrush Art Summit. And um, hopefully you're learning. This isn't as good as most of my tutorials, but the price of free sometimes isn't the highest quality. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make a spec map. Same kind of techniques. Uh, this one, spec values. Uh, I want this to be pure black and white. And I'm just going to play around with these. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to come to image, hue saturation, make sure this doesn't have any colors in it, which it doesn't. And then um, again, I'm just going to play around with the uh, levels again. And this one, I really want the dark areas to give off almost no spec. Well, you should have it give off some information. I think this looks pretty good. And we'll call that one spec. All right, here's the final maps I'm going to use in production with my uh, ZBrush modeling. So the first one we see, this is our diffuse layer. And basically what that was was the original one. Remember, it was about half the size. I just um, made a copy of it over. Like I increased the canvas size by um, twice the size. So originally it was 1500 by 1500. And then I increased the width by 3000, which allowed me to just duplicate one over to make this a little longer. And that'll make sense um, once we get into the tutorial. A lot of times if you're just using 3D Studio Max or things like that, the squared map would be fine. But for our demonstration purposes, it's good for us to have this out wide like this. And it's just very specific to what we're gonna be doing with my piece. Um, next, we have the displacement map. And then we have our bump map. And finally, a spec map. So the spec, bump, and diffuse are all gonna be used later in Keyshot whenever we're applying our beauty renders to this piece. So that's pretty much to it. Now you guys know how to make tileable textures. You know how to adjust um, maps to remove color information out of them uh, or photos. So you can take your own photos and do that. And um, you also know how to make bump maps. So now let's see how this stuff actually all looks whenever we put it into ZBrush and dark, uh, start to display stuff. I think it's gonna look really cool. If you like this video, the entire tutorial is available for free on Gumroad. Click the yellow Gumroad pop-up box below and you can download all five HD videos for this tutorial series. Additionally, I've included everything that I demonstrate in the project, such as the maps that you see here, like this diffuse, displacement, spec map, and even my bump map. And then in addition to that, I've also put my ZBrush file in here that you guys can open up and use. And finally, I've uh, included the Keyshot file. So whether you want to create everything yourself or use my maps and files to follow along. Everything's absolutely free. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching these tutorials and I hope you learned a few valuable tricks. Until next time.